You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare. Now, the jury in a recent high-profile case in London failed to reach a verdict and was discharged. The judge had to dismiss the jury over what he called its fundamental deficit in understanding. The jury had asked the judge various questions about the nature of reasonable doubt and whether a juror can reach a verdict based on a reason not presented in court and which has no facts or evidence to support it. The judge said no. The fallout of this case in the press swiftly moved on to the viability of jurors and whether they still serve the purpose in a courtroom. Joining me to discuss whether courts in England and Wales should abolish trial by jury is John Cooper QC, a criminal and human rights barrister at 25 Bedford Row. Robin Callender-Smith, a media lawyer, barrister and judge. And Sophia Patel, who promotes teaching the legal system in new academies and schools and runs a competition to hold mock trials for pupils. So, first question, should we abolish trial by jury? I'll go to you first, John Cooper QC. Certainly not. I think it's a, a system which is based upon human beings. And of course, a system based upon human beings is going to be flawed, as human beings are flawed. But uh, I'll put the question and turn it around another way. What is the alternative? And the alternative frightens me, with all due respect, <laughs> in the sense that it is a judge taking over, a single, uh, unelected judge taking over, uh, and making important decisions about the liberty, in many cases, of individuals. So my fundamental position for us to debate, as it were, is that uh, juries are a good system. They're the best system. Uh, it is flawed, but it is far better than uh, a single uh, individual. I'm going to come to you, Robin Callender-Smith, uh, media lawyer, barrister and judge. I, I believe we've now reached a situation where juries, because of the internet and the research they can do on the internet, out of court, uh, makes them potentially and almost fundamentally flawed. Uh, in my view, the question that was asked by the jury in the Vicky Price trial about whether they could take into account evidence that had not been presented to them, um, indicated, um, perhaps, that they had been doing exactly that. And it's quite interesting in the second trial that's just started this week that, in fact, a bit of evidence that was not used in the first trial uh, is now available to the jury. OK, before we move on and dissect these opposing views, Sophia, what do you think? I think at the moment what the UK has is a jury system and while there might be flaws what we need to do is help juries perform their function better and this is one of the things that we do at the Citizenship Foundation um, by running the mock trial competition. Um, we want to educate young people so they can actually perform their civic duty and one of those is obviously um, performing on a jury and our mock trial competitions give people access to what is this criminal justice system what role does a jury play the questions that were asked in the Vicky Price case for me were more due to ignorance rather than the fact that we shouldn't have a jury system in place. What age are the pupils that you teach who, who we, might pretend to be on a jury? We run, we run two competitions. One is um, with slightly younger students, but we start um, we work with students from the ages of 11 to 18. And um, we get the young people, we present them with a criminal case. They play the roles of prosecution lawyers, of defence lawyers, of the witnesses, of jury members. And they um, work out what those roles would be. So they work out what the prosecution lawyer's role is. Um, they work out how a defendant is tried, what um, questions you can or can't ask witnesses. Um, and the jury um, gets um, guidance on how they should deliberate and reach a decision. It's not real, but they get some sort of understanding of what they would need to do were they asked to perform that function in, as part of public life. So do you think then you can teach a sense of justice to children between 11 and 18? I don't, I don't, I think the reason why we have a jury system is so that you can be judged by your fellow um, country person. Not, we're not teaching them what justice is. What we're saying is it's better to have 
12 members of ordinary people from the street, um, coupled with a judge who has the legal underpinning and have a jury that um, will exercise what they think is right um, morally, which is not something that the judge should be bringing into play. Um, Yes, there are flaws because they all have their own biases and their own um, ideas of what they think is fair or not fair, but you've got 12 people. Um, It's not one person and they have to either reach a majority verdict or a unanimous verdict. And if you tell people... If you educate them about that function and how they can go through that decision-making process, that's what we can teach them. It's not teaching them, you've got to make this decision or this is what is going to be just or not. That's down to the individual. Um, Robin, would you think that uh, if this practice was rolled out with uh, in all schools and then it would uh, guarantee a future generation of children that understood the legal goings-on in a courtroom... Would that not help empower people with a sense of what they need to do serving on a jury? I, I've been very fortunate to actually see um, the the project involving children because I used to run uh, the youth court at Thames in the East End of London, which is one of the busiest youth courts in the country. Uh, and uh, the children taking part in the mock trials competitions were absolutely superb. Uh, and I know John's got a particular association with the charity that is uh, behind this. Um, I think showing uh, the elements of um, how justice should be delivered and considered is invaluable. Um, It's also worth bearing in mind how we came to the modern jury trial system. Um, Really until uh, about 1898, it wasn't open to the... Uh, accused to give evidence on their own behalf. Um, It was thought that if they uh, took an oath, um, in fact, uh, and they were found guilty, they were effectively damning themselves. So the modern jury system is a relatively um, new invention. Um, I was an advocate of it uh, during my time in practice. I just feel that things have now moved to the stage with the internet where it is impossible to control the information that goes into the trial process. Uh, Whatever juries are told about what they should and shouldn't do, it is impossible to stop people going home using their uh, PCs, their mobile devices, and researching the background of the accused. The jurors know that they're not allowed to do that. They know that they're not allowed to do it. But a, a survey that was conducted in 2010 showed that 13% of jurors in high-profile trials had ignored that and actually done the research. But then they're held in contempt of court? No. No? They're not uh, admitting, if you like, in a judicial sense that they've done it. They um, did that in response to academic uh, research. And it's impossible for judges to know, uh, and defence and prosecution barristers to know, Uh, what the jury are accessing now because of the internet. The second point is really that the jury come back uh, with a simple yes or no answer, and there is no reasoning behind that. Um, A judge-only trial would mean that both the prosecution and the defence would know exactly how the judge had arrived at the decision of guilt or innocence. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. Joining me to discuss whether the jury system should be abolished is Sophia Patel, who promotes teaching the legal system in schools, Robin Callender-Smith, a media lawyer, barrister and judge, and John Cooper QC, a criminal and human rights barrister at 25 Bedford Row. Picking up on what Robin said a moment ago about the the work of the the mock trial competition, though, just uh, following on from that, I'm uh, vice chair of that uh, 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 pr- project and again endorse the important work that's going on there. Not only important work in uh, jury uh, uh, appreciation, but important work in understanding the criminal justice process. But going uh, 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 particularly on, on, on Robin's argument a moment ago, let's remind ourselves that statistically 480,000 people per year in uh, England and Wales, 480,000 people per year are uh, called up to serve on a jury. Now, uh, uh, 
the fact is, of those 480,000 people, very rarely do we have the, the issues that have been raised by uh, the present debate. And that simply shows that the issues raised by the present debate uh, are very unusual indeed. The second thing to say is this. Many cases, if not the majority of cases that go through the criminal courts, are rather mundane, if I can put it that way. Uh, the majority of them are not troubled by material on the internet uh, which could prejudice a jury in any particular way. And with all due respect to, Rob to, to Robin's argument, I would say that simply throwing out a jury system which works for, shall we say, 480,000 people bar the odd one every year perfectly well, to throw it out on the odd number of cases that have an internet connection, in my view, would be, well, there's an expression we have in this country, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Well, you know, Robin, you must uh, respond to that. There is a response, and that is, um, as John is well aware, 98% of all the criminal trials that take place in this country take place at magistrates court level, um, where either magistrates or district judges, as I was, uh, deal with cases on their own, without juries. So there is a vast body of um, criminal accusation that is dealt with without jury trial in any event. And that's all the more reason, in my view, to maintain the very small 2% of uh, relatively serious cases uh, for the, uh, the people, for the, the citizen, to impact upon the criminal justice process. And I'd say this as well. This is one of the few ways, and it goes back, back perhaps to the work that uh, is being done on the Citizenship Foundation, uh, serving on a jury is one of the few ways the public can interact with the criminal justice process. Abolishing the jury entirely, for what I accept, and it's part of my argument in fact, is a very small percentage of work, is again removing a very important way that the people, the public, the citizen can engage with the criminal justice process. Take that away and it becomes even more judge-led, lawyer-led and remote. Do you come from uh, a position then, Robin, that you want to, you'd wish to abolish the jury system because of its outdated mode in, in, and because of the rise of the uh, worries of the internet and is that because of your media law background? That, that worried me to a point. Uh, my media law background is that I actually started my working life as a journalist. I didn't become a lawyer until my mid-twenties. Um, so I spent a long time in fact in courts, both observing them and later as a practitioner and as a judge. A lot of my work now as a judge is an immigration judge. And in that jurisdiction, we are effectively looking at the Secretary of State for the Home Department, the Home Secretary, saying certain people can't have asylum. And there's no evidence that the immigration judges particularly are bowing to state pressure and becoming less independent. They're asserting their judicial independence and quite capable at arriving at difficult and well-reasoned judgments. That's what I think accused are entitled to, that they are entitled to know how the judicial system reached a decision in terms of the accusation, whether it's guilt or innocence. But I, I, have to say, Robin, uh, in, I have to say, Robin, in response to that, there's absolutely no substantive evidence that the jury aren't doing that. I emphasise again, 480,000 people a year and, and hardly any complaint whatsoever. The fact, even if a judge... Uh, taking up Robin's example, and it's 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 a it's it's a good debating point, but taking up Robin's example of a judge giving reasons on the facts, that doesn't necessarily mean there'll be an appeal. Because already in our criminal justice process, you cannot appeal on the facts. You can only appeal on the law. So the fact that the judge might hypothetically give his or her reasons for finding a case on the facts matters not a jot, as matter as far as the law is concerned, to an appeal process. Well, Sophia, just to bring you back into the discussion, you've heard both sides now. Um, where would your pupils uh, stand on this? Where do they do they enjoy playing the part of the jury, being able to make these uh, decisions about who's in court, or do you find people would uh, the pupils would side with an argument that uh, it's all down to the judge? I, I I think pupils generally enjoy the whole process of being part of the mock trials competition. It's not just um, 
serving on the jury. But I think what that gives them is an appreciation of how difficult um, the role of being a jury person is and also the responsibility it entails. And I think part of the um, the questions that came up, for example, in the Vicky Price um, situation for me was a jury that wanted to do the right thing. And they asked those questions because they were unsure. And really what we need to look at is why do they these people have this knowledge gap? We, we're not, regardless of what people, what the Act, um, the outcome of this debate is whether we should get rid of the jury system or not. We currently have it, and I still think that um, people can um, get a lot out of being part of the justice system and feel involved and part of society in doing that and playing that important role. And it's um, akin to me as part of voting, you know, differing. You know, different people have different levels of knowledge about the voting system, what it means. But if the people that really appreciate and acknowledge it want to do a good job, and if we educate people about what the importance of the role is, we raised the point earlier about people going away and researching um, the cases or people involved in the cases. If they actually knew why we don't allow that, why that shouldn't be um, included as part of the evidence. I don't think as many people would do that. So can, I, we, can, I, we, can I use an analogy on that? Because I, I think you raise an important point, and Robin does as well, about, about uh, juries doing their extra research, as it was. The internet isn't a new issue as far as that's concerned. Headline cases, I've done them myself in the past, where there have been headline coverage of, of, of a murder or a death or something like that. Uh, and I've actually made applications to judges in the past uh, that a jury could not necessarily uh, consider a case uh, because of all the news uh, reporting and the headlines and judges for years and years and years, and the case I'm thinking of goes back 20 years or so ago, have said juries are quite capable of putting out of their minds headline, newspaper reporting and so on and so forth. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare. My guests and I are discussing whether the jury system should be abolished. Sophia Patel runs a mock trials competition for school pupils. John Cooper QC is a criminal and human rights barrister. Robin Callender-Smith is a media lawyer, barrister and judge. When I started work as a journalist, the press were present in almost every court and the newspaper that I worked on uh, effectively carried every case within the county, tombstoned. Uh, as John will know now, it really is only in the high-profile cases uh, that the press are seen. Uh, they tend to be agency press as opposed to reporters dedicated to particular uh, papers. And the death of independent inspection of what is happening within the judicial uh, system by the public is really to be regretted. I've watched courts empty of the press and in a sense the mock trials competition restores some of the balance in that, in that people taking part in it do understand that they can go into court and see how courts work, and that to me is very important. So um, I'm still, if you like, stuck on the idea that uh, I think internet research is going to become more and more egregious. Maybe you can uh, educate people away from it, but there is a reflex, I think it's a default reflex, to try and find out as much as is possible uh, to arrive at a true verdict. Now, if, uh, in fact, jurors were allowed to learn an awful lot more and just rely on trial judges saying, look, guys, uh, we're trying things on the issue before you in court, ignore what is outside, and that was going to be observed, I'd be less worried. Uh, it, it's, in, it's interesting what Robin says, and, 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 and I, I, I see the perspective, and perhaps juries do need to uh, become even more aware of their responsibilities when they're on a jury. I think they are, fundamentally. But we live in an age of television programmes. We have programmes here, when, and probably elsewhere, that are listening to this broadcast. Uh, CSI programmes, where you see everyone who is anything other than a police officer going out and doing their own private investigation into a case. I think there is a sort of mentality of... Um, jurors are lay members of the public, uh, of a mind, well, we can do our own investigation, because that's the culture we're brought up in. And so there is a, a, a rite of passage, I think, for jurors, when they become jurors, to realise that, no... That's drama. You don't go out and do your own investigations. But as, as, as I've indicated, my experience is that judges are, uh, juries are responsible people who take their responsibilities very seriously indeed. 
So we we have to accept that, and all there is an argument to accept that jurors don't believe everything they read on Google or Facebook or Twitter. This debate is about, in my view, as I understood it, to be whether those growing pains of the social media, the development of the internet, is enough to abolish the jury in this country. That's what we're debating. Uh, I, I, if we're debating that, the, that there are interface problems with the social media and the internet and the court system, I think most of us would agree with that, and we're, we're getting over that. But this debate's about whether that should end the jury system in well, this country. And I, I, I go back to what I'm saying, it should not. And can you then, we'll go back to what the alternative is that you find so frightening? The alternative is a single judge. With all due respect to, uh, to Robin, who's, who's a perfectly sensible, well-balanced, if, if I may say so, and, uh, and fair man. Uh, 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 but the fact of the matter is, I'm talking in gener generality now, uh, judges, particularly those that uh, work day in and day out in crime in criminal courts, like, I have to say, lawyers, you can get a bit sanguine, you can get a bit cynical, you can get a bit uh, battle-hardened, for want of a better expression. Uh, and you do not have the freshness of approach and the open-minded approach. And I say that of myself as much as I would say it about colleagues who are judges. If you're doing criminal cases day in, day out, the jury provide a fresh... Uh, a, a approach, a clear approach, uh, and an open-minded approach. And that's why I feel that uh, uh, having uh, career judges, as it were, uh, uh, day in, day out, having people accused of crime in front of them, uh, and, and having to have, uh, with the best will in the world, an open-minded and uncluttered approach uh, to the plethora of criminal cases going before them, is almost inhuman uh, to expect of them. Isn't there an argument that those who are stood accused or defending themselves, if they see a jury in court, there is that level that of a balance that they view the public. There is a... a it's a confidence. Uh, a, a, the provision of a jury in a court, uh, and, and going back to the point that Robin perfectly properly made a moment ago, it's only 2% of cases we're talking about here. So, again, it's, it's not cluttering up the criminal justice system in this country. But the fact that an accused, uh, when they're facing particularly serious charges, can see that they're facing their peers then uh, uh, that is a reassuring system as far as the fairness and openness. And this goes back to openness, an open justice system. And the perception of an open justice system is just as important as the reality of an open justice system. Robin, would you like to respond to that now? Uh, and I think um, John's points are quite valid. Uh, in my time, the jury had its place. It was a very, very important uh, bulwark uh, for freedom. I just think that uh, the new technology and the internet has moved things to a level uh, where it's not going to go away. I can't see that judges are properly going to be able to control uh, how jurors access things like this, and I think the problem will compound itself. But, 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 but in dealing with that, the, the judges not being able to control how jurors look at the internet, for instance, my concern, and I'm being realistic here, is that the reality is that ju judges can control the way juries think, and, and I don't think it's right. Uh, in a, a judge is summing up in this country, and many of us feel that uh, there should be some amendment made to how far a judge can go on, just, on summing up the facts. I'm of the view, it's not... I suppose it could be considered controversial, is that judges should simply ju uh, sum up the law. Uh, but the I, fact I is, think that's a very fair point. Uh, but the fact is, when judges sum up the facts, uh, I'm not saying this of Robin, as I say, I emphasize again from what I know, Robin is a very fair and, 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 and proper judge. Uh, but sometimes judges do put a slant on it. And I've certainly been in cases where I've seen uh, a second prosecution speech being made, if I can put it that way, in a summing up. So uh, there is an influence there, and a jury is... Uh, again, to use Robin's expression, a bulwark in many respects against that influence. And uh, I will accept historically has often been able to step in and correct bullying judges by um, effectively acquitting yes. in the face of the evidence. Absolutely, yes. And, 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 and I, I don't mean to make this a two-way, because obviously I, I want to hear what Sophia has to say on this, particularly from her work with young people. But the fact is, that is a very important role a, a, a jury play. Now, some would say that's the worst, uh, that's why we don't want juries, because they can go against the law. Others, like me, would say that's one of their cardinal principles. They can come to a verdict which might be technically cold law guilty, but is unjust, and therefore come to a just verdict. Sophia, obviously you support the idea that uh, jurors continue in the uh, court system in, in, in the UK. Um, having listened to both arguments from uh, our guests here, 
Do you think that there needs to be the level of modernisation to the curriculum to embrace the new media technology that becomes second nature to people and especially the generation growing up to preserve the the role of a of a juror or do you think that actually like robin says the the very nature of of the internet and the social media and the second nature effortless look on your phone for information means that it's too dangerous and should make a juror's role obsolete. I do agree that information is much more readily available. It's ubiquitous. It's, um, you know, you can just look at your phone and get information, whereas previously you'd have to be um, really determined to get that information and do your research. But I think different people have different natures. Not everyone goes out there and does research um, on the case. Some people, in fact, you know, you could say some jury members are quite disinterested. There isn't information information about people on the internet you might by chance have a connection you know through twitter or something like that but it's very rare that you're going to have lots of information about the accused or the case in hand the reason why we're here and why we're talking about this was this was a high profile case and when we hear about the situations in where things have gone wrong with juries it is again in those high profile cases. it's not in the majority of those two percent of cases where the juries are functioning happily and you know delivering justice and um, also, the other things juries really provide is they're drawn from the local communities, usually in the where the court is based, where it's served. They understand the nature of that local community. They have an understanding of the people. Um, some judges aren't in touch with what's happening in the community. They don't understand the issues that are going on. And I feel like the jury brings that um, into play. Obviously, most of the people um, that are currently in school and learning things, they will be the juries of the future. Um, there are... Um, if they're still around. If they're still around. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking they'll still be around. I, they're still going to be a, around for a while to come. Even if there's a decision to abolish them, there will be... a. Uh, a period of change where you know you will still probably have juries functioning while they work up an alternative but i i do think that we need to work out how do we educate these people so they understand not just the role of the jury and i do want to emphasize this this isn't about what a jury does it's actually understanding the whole criminal justice system and i think that's what's missing just to go back to the education and obviously the you know the qualification of jurors and the, the way they're selected is still random and there is the it has been uh, put out there that uh, you know jurors must reach a certain degree level, which I didn't disagree with. I mean, that, that, that's I, that, I agree that's rubbish. Yeah. It's it's almost it's it's yeah. it's, it's bordering on arrogant. Exactly, but I think because of the time constraints I have, I'm going to end with Robin. Of course, if that's fair, we uh, questioned the judge. The, always, how, the judge how, always has the last yeah, word. Yeah, so. and, and how battle hard, <laughs> how battle hard a judge can be. The jury is going to become uh, unless educated, uh, really. Uh, as was being discussed earlier. Um, if there are ways of retaining a jury so that uh, the information that it considers uh, remains unsullied effectively and stays on what is presented in court, I really have no problem. But I think the logistics of doing that are becoming increasingly impossible. I'd like to thank all my guests, Sophia Patel, Robin Callender-Smith and John Cooper, QC. how a defendant is tried, what um, questions you can or can't ask witnesses. Um, and the jury um, gets um, guidance on how they should deliberate and reach a decision. It's not real, but they get some sort of understanding of what they would need to do were they asked to perform that function in, as part of public life. So do you think then you can teach a sense of justice to children between 11 and 18 I don't, I don't, I think the reason why we have a jury system is so that you can be judged by your fellow um, country person. Not, we're not teaching them what justice is. What we're saying is it's better to have 12 members of ordinary people from the street um, coupled with a judge who has the legal underpinning and have a jury that, um, 
will exercise what they think is right um, morally, which is not something that the judge should be bringing into play. Um, yes, there are flaws because they'll all have their own bias. Come to you, Robin Callender smith uh, media lawyer, barrister and judge. I, I believe we've now reached a situation where juries, because of the internet and the research they can do on the internet out of court, uh, makes them potentially and almost fundamentally flawed. Uh, in my view, the question that was asked by the jury in the Vicky Price trial about whether they could take into account evidence that had not been presented to them um, indicated, um, perhaps, that they had been doing exactly that. And it's quite interesting in the second trial that's just started this week that, in fact, a bit of evidence that was not used in the first trial uh, is now available to the jury. OK, before we move on and dissect these opposing views, Sophia, what do you think? I think at the moment what the UK has is a jury system. And while there might be flaws, what we need to do is help juries perform their function better. And this is one of the things... Robin Callender-Smith, a media lawyer, barrister and judge, and Sophia Patel, who promotes teaching the legal system in new academies and schools and runs a competition to hold mock trials for pupils. So, first question, should we abolish trial by jury? I'll go to you first, John Cooper QC. Certainly not. I think it's a, a system which is based upon human beings. And of course, a system based upon human beings is going to be flawed, as human beings are flawed. But uh, I'll put it, the question and turn it around another way. What is the alternative? And the alternative frightens me, with all due respect, <laughs> in the sense that it is a judge taking over, a single, uh, unelected judge taking over, uh, making important decisions about the liberty in many cases of individuals. So my fundamental position for us to debate, as it were, is that uh, juries are a good system. They're the best system. Uh, it is flawed, but it is far better than uh, a single uh, individual. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare. Now, the jury in a recent high-profile case in London failed to reach a verdict and was discharged. The judge had to dismiss the jury over what he called its fundamental deficit in understanding. The jury had asked the judge various questions about the nature of reasonable doubt and whether a juror can reach a verdict based on a reason not presented in court and which has no facts or evidence to support it. The judge said no. The fallout of this case in the press swiftly moved on to the viability of jurors and whether they still serve the purpose in a courtroom. Joining me to discuss whether courts in England and Wales should abolish trial by jury is John Cooper QC, a criminal and human rights barrister at 25 Bedford Row. That we do at the Citizenship Foundation um, by running the mock trial competition, um, we want to educate young people so they can actually perform their civic duty and one of those is obviously um, performing on a jury and our mock trial competitions give people access to what is this criminal justice system what role does a jury play the questions that were asked in the Vicky Price case for me were more due to ignorance rather than the fact that we shouldn't have a jury system in place. What age are the pupils that you teach who, who we, might pretend to be on a jury? We run, we run two competitions. One is um, with slightly younger students, but we start um, we work with students from the ages of 11 to 18. And um, we get the young people, we present them with a criminal case. They play the roles of prosecution lawyers, of defence lawyers, of the witnesses, of jury members. And they um, work out what those roles would be. So they work out what the prosecution lawyer's role is. Um, they work out how...